morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is Lori White. I'm the president of the Greater Providence Chamber of Commerce, and we are here today as a collective community of people who are concerned about our economic development rankings to reinforce the message that fixing our bridges, our roads, and our highways is an absolute necessity and a business imperative. Last spring and last fall, we called on the governor and the General Assembly when they weren't aligned on this issue to get together to develop a realistic approach for are resolving the deplorable condition of our roads and bridges. In the intervening months, they have done just as we asked. And we'd like to commend them for acting responsibly and for not burying their heads in the sand and saying that everything is going to be just fine. In the way of context, Area Development Magazine calls infrastructure quality and accessibility the number one factor in contemporary economic development. And that includes bridges, highways, runways, railways, and ports. And if anybody's interested in reading a little bit further about it, I will direct you to the Q4 2015 edition of Area Development Magazine, where they talk about the top location factors for business and industry. And they rank them on a scale of 1 to 10. And you can read for yourself what some of the factors are. Rhode Island's 50 out of 50 ranking puts us at the bottom of the pack on the number one issue that matters to business. Let me repeat that. We are dead last in the nation on the number one issue that matters to business. We must deal with the crisis, and we must deal with it now, and we must start there. The Greater Providence Chamber of Commerce has tackled our bottom of the pack rankings on a whole host of other issues all over the years, and that includes taxes. We have played a forceful role in arguing for improvements at TF Green Airport, the Port of Providence at Watson Point with the addition of the third freight rail. We've talked about the necessity of MBTA and Amtrak service and greater connectivity to points all along the East Coast. And we've talked about maritime pier dredging. Roadworks is a natural extension of those arguments. I have said it over and over again, Rhode Island cannot be an outlier on this issue. I was just reading uh, another article in Area Development, my favorite publication, <laughs> which reflects on the exponential growth of e-commerce. Economic development analysts say that distributors need and want to be close to dense population centers. Their primary business objective is guaranteeing, a, and let me repeat this very slowly, fast, seamless, consistent, and friction-free delivery experiences. Our local conditions do not meet those standards. Everyone knows that. As a long-term economic development strategy, Rhode Island must position itself to be able to accommodate today's industry practices and tomorrow's growth industries. Our residents have been paying for other states good roads and bridges. They pay it every time they get an online shipment, where freight has been tacked onto the order. They pay it every time they buy something in a brick and mortar establishment where freight has been tacked onto the order. The shippers have incurred tolls all along the way, unless of course they're delivered by drones, but we haven't seen that happen just yet. Now let's turn the tables and collect what is rightfully due to Rhode Island residents to help pay for the use of our roads. We have to optimize our approach 